big, big, big next story. A doping scandal developing out of Beijing could see Canada bumped up to a bronze medal in team figure skating. So here's the story. 15-year-old Russian skater Kamila Valieva allegedly tested positive for a banned substance back in December. The test results, though, they were only reported after she helped her team win a gold medal this past Monday. A final ruling is expected in the coming days, but this has us wondering, what is it like right now, the waiting game for the other team athletes, namely Team USA, Team Japan, Team Canada, who all may see a bump up in a medal waiting for these results? And one thing that's amazing on the show today is, Brandy, you are an Olympian. You know how the doping process um, and testing works in the Olympics mm -hmm. intimately. How big of a deal is this? And what do you think this is doing to the other athletes' psyches right now? No, absolutely. My heart goes out to everyone in that situation. I can only imagine. Um, yeah, the doping testing and the procedures are extremely serious and they're essential for our sport just to keep the field equal. Um, as soon as I got to the Olympics, the first night they woke me up in the middle of the night, I went and got dope tested. Like they come to your house, they, they, they check on you throughout the year, um, as they should. So when I hear about this, it's just tough. I, I could never comment as to whether so, or not Sorry, Brandy. I just, yeah. I just want to go back there in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, they're no one's safe. Like they'll come at any time. <laughs> Um, we had the longest travel day. Oh, yeah. I was like a whole check-in. It took forever. Went to bed. And then two hours later, I hear a knock on my door. And, you know, they just want to catch you at any point. Not catch you. It's not like an aggressive thing. But they, they'll they they'll check at any time of the day. Um, there's no, you, you know, you don't want people hacking the system or finding ways around it. <laughs> wow. That is wild. So quickly, like, the other teams that are standing by and waiting for this, like, what, what, is this doing to them? Do you think maybe? Yeah. I mean, I think we're all competitors. So I think it'd be hard to probably admit that they would kind of want another chance. I mean, everyone's been working at this for their entire lives, but um, with knowing how things go, just information gets blown up so quickly, especially around the Olympics. So you can never know for sure. And also it's just sad to think that no matter what the ruling ends up being, I think forever people are going to question her result. And that's just really hard to hear. <laughs> okay, one last question, because again, you're the Olympian here. Are you very aware of the list of banned substances? Is it something that you walk around day to day just kind of knowing you don't take this, you don't take this, you don't take this because it's banned? Or are you relying on somebody else to do that for you? It's extremely complicated. There are obvious banned substances that we stay away from, but we have to resort to researching on a certain database. And even that, sometimes there isn't enough information. So then I go to my nutritionist or a doctor and then have to get them. And then even that, they can't guarantee anything because they're like, well, we don't know the factory. So unless you are literally going to the factory, watching them make your specific product that is in your hand, there's just absolutely no guarantees, and it's extremely difficult to keep track of. Wow. Mm -hmm. This is in the NFL, too. That is, um, you know, Jabari, I'm curious yeah, to know how does this professional work? sport. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, do, I do agree with Brandy when I say that to understand everything that's banned is something that you have to be um, very attentive to. And sometimes you just don't know because there are a lot of things, there are like really big things. You know what steroids are, you know what certain things that um, that's general knowledge, but there are a lot of things that you don't know. But specific to this uh, thing that she took, uh, it's specifically something that helps your heart perform at a more optimal level. And for a 15 year old young lady, um, I, I don't know her health history, but I would say that, you know, being an Olympic athlete, then she probably didn't have the issues that that um, that that medicine um, actually dictated. But I would say that it's different from like baseball and like football um, from the Olympics, because the 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 barrier to entry into the Olympics is so monumental. You wait for so long. You train for so long just for that one moment, four years, eight years for that one moment 
that you can have your Olympic glory. In football, you know, I trained for maybe 16, 17 games. I trained for three months to 16, 17 games. In baseball, you have 90 games. In hockey, I mean, I don't know how many games y'all got in hockey, man. I might get me banned out of Canada. But you have a lot of games. And so what I'm saying is, is that for the Olympics, you have such a small a small area to have that type of, of performance and to to be able to cheat your way in that moment it's so heartbreaking for the people that do it the right way that waited their turn and now has it taken away from them. Mm -hmm. and i think in this case too like age is a factor she's 15 years old um, so she, this is not an adult. She's actually relying, like Mel, you were talking about whose responsibility is to know the drugs, to know the list. And, you know, we're dealing with, a, a, like, you know, a teenager, she's 15 years old. She's and considered she a protected athlete relies. because of her age. Yeah. yeah. And she has to rely on adults to help her make decisions, to, you know, in this training, which is what, another thing that complicates this situation. And then, I guess, you know, to the question of how other athletes must be managing this, like we're in the middle of the competition. The ladies singles event begins on Tuesday. So there's an entire field of competitors. Like never mind the team event. They're not gonna redo it. They're just gonna re reshuffle the medals if they need to. But there are there's a whole ladies event that still has to be skated and I cannot imagine this distraction is, I mean, it's a circus now for everybody. And, and, you know, and I don't know if they can say that they're competing at their best with this over their heads. Yeah, no, that's a great point. That's, that's the first thing that I was thinking of. And especially if I can shout out Team Canada, this decision that should come before next Tuesday will make the difference between a Team Bronze or going home without a medal in the team uh, sport. So like, that's a huge, to your point, Jabari, who, you know, these athletes who've been training forever for this moment, that is a massive, massive difference. So, you know, for that, I'm, we'll be thinking of them and we know we'll probably be talking about this next week as well. So uh, we'll be watching this one closely.